Hey everybody, welcome to Jay's Turn Designs Fitting and Pattern Perfection. Um, what I want to do today is talk about my pants that I'm working on. And if you remember last week, I showed how to fit them. And then over the weekend, I actually cut them out and tried them on and I was like super excited. So um, I want to show you what's happened since then. So that's what I'm going to do today. Something that's really interesting to me um, with pants fitting. Now I'm not talking about jeans or leggings. I'm talking about pants. Um, sometimes with the fabric you're working on, you may want the crotch curve to hang down below your actual body parts. Um, and it creates a nice soft drape. Um, and so you don't have that crotch curve issue so much in the front where you want to get it in exactly the right position. Um, but depending on the fabric you're working with, sometimes that does not work. So um, the first muslin I made was a, in a soft tensile um, fabric and it was soft and it draped and it hung nice and it looked nice. I mean, I could see that the front crotch was hanging a little bit low. Right, so if you're making dress pants, or, you know, trousers, you know, something where you, you don't want them to be like fitted slacks. Um, slacks are really the correct term for the most fitted type of pant. I made the pants pattern up in this khaki fabric. Okay, so here's the actual muslin. You can see it. Um, and what happened was you could clearly see that the crotch was hanging low. Now, Again, if that's what you're trying to make, it's not necessarily wrong, but I wanted them to be a little bit more fitted so I could see that I needed to raise my crotch curve up so it wasn't hanging so low. What I did to raise it was I actually pleated it up about three quarters of an inch. So I pinched across and I pinned it like that. I didn't sew it, but I did pin it. Um, and then I noticed after I had raised the cr crotch curve up that I still had extra length in there. Okay, so this was my original inseam. Okay. And here's my crotch seam right here. Okay, so that's my crotch seam. Okay, and what I did was I actually started almost at the knee down here and I took in the, the, the leg along the inseam like this and I went straight across to the other side. Okay, and so what that did was it actually shortened the crotch length again about a half an inch. So I got rid of this much fabric um, and I did it front to back. I just pinched it and did both legs at the same time. So that also shortens your crotch length. Um, let me just take this out. So like if you were working on a muslin and you wanted to bring your crotch curve up, but you felt like you pleated it up enough here, okay, what you could do is unsew it. I'm just going to tear this. Okay. And you could individually shorten along the inseam. Okay. Because what that's doing is this is my crotch curve right here. See my front crotch curve? So if I sew in deeper, it's actually trimming the crotch point off. But basically, I shortened it, you know, that half inch right there. Okay, so between shortening it up here, so here, here's the um, the front, you know, you can pleat it out here. Okay, so you can pinch it here and then remove it from your pattern like that. That shortens it, but then it also shortens it down here as well. And actually that was a, tr a trick I learned um, from one of my friends who manages all the seamstresses at Best Cleaners in the area. 
she went to fashion design school and I taught with her at Sanford Brown College a little bit. But, you know, she told me in ready to wear, if you want to shorten your front crotch curve, you can take it in along the inseam um, to try to fix the fit of your ready to wear pants. So let me show you my pattern. I taped the amount I took off. So when I showed you my uh, muslin and how I sewed in deeper along the inseam, I actually cut it off and taped it here so I could show you what I actually took off. So here was the final length of my crotch point. And then the other thing is I took or shortened the, um, the length of it here too by slashing it and spreading it down or not spreading it down, but pleating it down. So that's what I wanna just quickly show you how to do these two things today. What you wanna do is compare the difference between your, the, your seam, your original seam, and then how much you took it in. Okay, so the difference between my original seam and how much I took it in, this amount between is what you're taking off. You're not cutting off the whole amount because you still need a seam allowance. So you measure from here to here, and then you trim that off. So if I were to measure, you know, for this example, that's a, a half an inch, almost, well, we'll just say it's a half an inch. You're gonna measure a half an inch here and take that off. And then what I did was I just blended back to zero as gradually as I could. Okay, and if you look at the picture, you can see how it's hanging low. The curve is hanging low, plus you can see there's um, extra along my inseam there. That's gonna take this up right here. And then to raise the whole curve, what I'm gonna do is I'm, I'm gonna do this very common adjustment where you know I just draw the amount I want to take up. Let's say it's an inch, okay? So you cut through the front on one line. I'm just gonna make a pivot there. And then you just pivot it, okay? And that's how you shorten it above. All right, so that's what I did to the, um, that's what I did. I shortened and got rid of here. Okay, so I got rid of all of this. And I also got rid of all of this. But so that's how the crotch looks now. And the thing that I like about my shapes on this pattern is this makes a plus sign and it's not peaking one way or the other. So I really like the shape of this um, and it's very comfortable and it fits nicely now. And um, in the back, let me show you the cute pockets I designed. All right, so see in the back, what I did was I created a, um, a sort of a, a rounded pocket like this. And then I put a little pleat in there to give it some interest. Isn't that cute? So all I did was literally just fold it on itself about a quarter of an inch to make that um, little design. Um, and I tipped the, the, the top edge of the pocket down for something different. So I lined it, you know, and then I turned it um, and then for my top stitching for something different, I started over here where the tip edge starts and I went around the corner, went around and back. So that's just a little bit of a different, um, you know, detail for a back pocket. Um, if you want to get really, you know, sort of fancy with these pleats, you'd actually have to draft them in because if you start pleating the edge of your pocket without actually making something too pleat, it'll distort the pocket and it will start to peak up here. Um, and it did a little bit. So to counteract that just for this quick pocket design, I tipped it down so you can't tell. But um, I think maybe another good 
um, topic for a different day could be to how to draft a pattern piece um, with some, you know, some 3D uh, structure to it, you know, to make a pleated pocket or, you know, to add a little detail like that. Um, but I thought that was kind of cute. But in any case, so that's really all I have for today. It wasn't a huge topic. Um, maybe next week what I'll do is I'll, we'll design some back pockets that have 3D. So not just a patch pocket, but something that's got a cool designer detail to it. So um, I think I've made all the basics. Okay, so if you look at my pattern collection in my you know, online store, if you think about the patterns that you've seen me make, I have my basic tee, I have my basic jeans, I have my basic fitted shirt, I have um, really all the standard patterns that you would need. And that was my goal starting when I started making my own collection. So now what I'm going to start doing is making patterns that have cool seam details or different, um, you know, gathers or funky pockets or whatever. So um, you know, in my head, that's where I'm going with this.